Hello students. Today we'll be learning this lesson water. Water is very essential for the life of plants and animals. You may have noticed that whenever you are thirsty, you want to drink water. In the same way, crops also cannot be grown without water. Water is a basic need for all. There are many uses of water. So water is a very important resource. It is called life liquid. 71% of the earth's surface is covered by water. Let us look at this image of the earth's surface. So you can notice that there are a lot of areas that are blue in color. So this corresponds to water covered areas. That is why we can understand that a major portion of the earth's surface, that is 71% of the earth's surface is covered with water. After studying this lesson, you will know about the sources of water, the physical characteristics of water, and you will understand the biological importance of water, you will know the importance of conservation methods of water and also you will be able to verify the traditional and modern ways to conserve water. Now, let us have a quiz round. So the question is, what is the percentage of water on earth's surface? Options are 51%, 61%, 71%, or 81%. If you need time to think, you can pause the video. The correct answer is C, 71%. So the earth is 71% covered with water. Let us move on to this exercise. Recall the distribution of water on the earth that you have learned in your previous class. Answer the questions. Question 1. Where can you find more water on the earth? So we saw the image of the earth and we know that it is in oceans that we find more water on the earth. So question two is, what is the consumable quantity of fresh water? There are two types of water on earth. One is fresh water and the other is salty water. Salty water is not consumable by us. So the quantity of fresh water on the earth is very less. It's only about 2.5 to 2.75%. Okay. So the third question is asking, what are the sources of fresh water? So oceans are not a source of fresh water because they have salty water. Sources of fresh water include groundwater, which we can get through bore wells, rivers, wells, and even frozen water in ice and glaciers. There are other sources of fresh water also. I want you to think and write some other sources of fresh water that you can recall. Let us move on to the next question, which is write here the sources of water that you know. So observe that they have asked for all sources of water, not only fresh water or salty water. So think about all the sources of water that you know and make a list of them over here. I will leave this question for you. In the next section, we talk about the sources of water. So rain is the main source of water. Rain water is fresh water. Let us learn about the other sources of water. Oceans. Oceans are the biggest source of water on the earth. However, we have learned that ocean water is salty water. We can see an image of a very big ocean on the right. Now let us look at this globe. The blue color indicates the portion of water, sorry, portion of the earth that is covered by water. We have already learned 
that the earth is majorly covered by water. The next source of water are rivers. So rain is the source of river water also. Melted snow from the mountains reaches the river during summer. So you might have seen in images of mountains that the top of very high mountains is filled with snow. In summer seasons, this snow will melt and it will flow into the rivers. So these rivers will overflow. All the rivers will flow in their definite route and finally reach the ocean. So in this image, we can see the major rivers of India. And over here, we can see the river that originates in Karnataka, that is Kaveri, that is flowing and finally draining into the ocean through the Bay of Bengal. The next exercise is name some of the important rivers of Karnataka. So we can name Kaveri, Sharavati, Kali River, Tungabhadra and other rivers. So I want you to think about some other rivers that you can name and list them over here. Now let us look into springs, water that is stored under the earth's crust and comes out due to the pressure through an opening is called as spring. So as you can see in the picture that is shown here, it is coming out from the earth's surface with high pressure. Rainwater which enters the earth through its loose portions will be collected as underground water and this comes out in the form of springs. Next, we are talking about wells. So, underground water obtained by digging the earth's crust to a certain depth is called as well water. So, there are two types of wells as they are shown here. One is open wells as you can see in the left or the first picture and the next one is bored wells. So the next question is, how many types of wells are there? Which are they right here? So as we can see here, there are two types of wells. One is the open well, which is not very deeply dug. Instead, it's quite shallow. And the next type of well is the bored well or the well that is dug very deep. The next section tells us about the excessive utilization of underground water. Due to the excessive utilization of underground water, it is getting exhausted. So when something is getting exhausted, it means that it's getting over. It can be regained by the absorption of rainwater into the earth. However, this process of absorption of rainwater into the earth, it is going to take time. So what exactly underground water is, is that when it rains, water goes into the ground and under the ground and it's stored there. We can use this water by using wells and bore wells. However, if we continue using this water without paying attention to the fact that we are exhausting it, it will get over. So in order for us to make sure we will have continued access to this water, we have to minimize the utilization of underground water and we have to follow some restoration methods. So they have given us two restoration methods that we can use. One is rainwater harvesting and the other is recycling of water. The next source of water that we will be talking about are ponds. An artificially man-made low-level portion of land to store water is called a pond. So it's a man-made structure and it's constructed at a lower level. Its capacity to store water is less. So the water storage capacity of ponds is less. And it is constructed in such a way that rainwater, which drains from high level, will be stored here. 
rainwater reaches ponds by running through small streams called rivulets. So another source of pond water is when rainwater can reach the pond through small streams called rivulets. The next source of water is reservoirs. Dams are constructed across rivers to store water throughout the year and supply to places where there is scarcity and also for multi-purpose projects. So we can say that it does not rain throughout the year. Only in rainy season we'll be getting a lot of rains. So some regions of the land will be facing water scarcity in summer season or other seasons when there is no water. So to make sure there is year-long supply of water, we construct dams or reservoirs. These, capable, these are capable of storing water in large scale. Okay, So that is one difference between the previous source that is ponds and this source that is reservoirs. We can store a large quantity of water. Okay, now they want us to name the water resources in Karnataka. We have some water resources in Karnataka as well. Let us think of two names. So one name can be the Krishna Raja Sagara Dam or the KRS Dam. And the next one can be the Almaty Dam. Find out other sources of other reservoirs of water that is in Karnataka around you. The next exercise is to find out the differences between pond and reservoirs. With the help of these pictures, note the differences of pond and reservoirs in these boxes. Write their uses also. So first, let us notice this first image. So here we can see water is flowing from high region to lower region into the pond. So the first difference between ponds and reservoirs can be the source of water. We can notice here that the river is the source of water for the reservoir. So rainwater and rivulets or small streams are source of water for pond whereas river water are source of water for reservoir. In the next image, we can see that the size of the pond is small. However, the size of the reservoir is very big. So, the next difference can be that the size of the small pond is a small portion of land, whereas the size of the reservoir is a large portion of the land. The next difference, as we can see here, is the water capacity. The amount of water that can be stored in the pond is smaller. However, the amount of water that can be stored in the reservoir is much higher. So, the storage capacity of pond is less and the storage capacity of the reservoir is more. Now, let us look into the uses of pond and reservoirs. Firstly, let us consider ponds. So, ponds are smaller sources of water. However, you might have seen in videos and on the television how animals, domesticated animals like cows and even wild animals use ponds to drink water. So, the first use of pond can be water for animals. Next, they are also homes for fishes and other aquatic creatures. So, ponds are home for fish and other aquatic creatures. Finally, ponds can also serve small-scale agricultural needs. So, whenever there is rain, the pond will get filled up and the land that is surrounding the pond can make use of this pond water in times when there is need. So, those are the uses of pond water. Next, let us look into the uses of reservoir water. So, reservoir water has the capacity for hydroelectric power generation. So, as you can see here, we have the image of a reservoir and you can see that there is a lot of force in the water that is coming down. 
This can be used for the generation of hydroelectric power. Next, reservoir can also be used for irrigation of land and agriculture. It can also give water for humans and can be used for human consumption in times when there is scarcity of water. Now, we will have a quiz. So, the question is, which is not a source of water? So, you have to choose the option that is not a source of water. The options are, well, pond, atmosphere and rain. The correct answer is atmosphere. You should have chosen atmosphere because it is not a source of water. The others, well, pond and rain are sources of water. Because this lesson is quite big, we will be dividing it into two parts. This is the end of part one.